Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? Uh, hope you're having a good day. And uh, we have another lesson here. It's uh, good for people. And if you'll share this message, you never know who you might touch with this message. So um, let, let's uh, get into our lesson. And the title of the lesson is, Have You Counted the Cost? And we usually consider this subject from the standpoint of being saved. But today we're going to look at it from the view of being lost. Now, some of you might remember the song by this title. Have you counted? Have you counted the cost? And in fact, we sing it every once in a while. And as we sing the song, several thoughts come to mind. And we're, we're going to look at the words of these, this song and consider some things. So and these are things we need to consider daily. So nobody exempt from dying. We know that. And Hebrews 9, 27 tells us it is appointed for man once to die, then afterwards the judgment. So whenever that time comes, we should be prepared to face God in judgment. But if we're not prepared, I mean, uh, have we really counted the cost to consider that? Many are not prepared. And so in Matthew 16 and verse 26, it says, for what will a man be profited if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So we only have one soul. I mean, I mean, only one soul is all we have. And it was given to us upon our conception. When we, when we became viable human being, I mean, that, that was at birth, that conception. And so this soul is housed in our fleshly bodies. And this soul is eternal. And long after we are dead, our soul will continue. And have you considered your soul that will continue? What's going to go on after my death? You know, a lot of people probably figure, well, it really doesn't matter. I don't need my body, so it's not going to do me any good. Well, they need to reconsider that because God speaks very much about the soul that will continue. And your eternal destiny is decided by the decisions you make in this life. And so we're going to look at the song and hopefully learn some things about our soul. See, in verse one, <clears throat> there's a line that is drawn by rejecting our Lord where the call of his spirit is lost. And you hurry along with the pleasure mad throng. I mean, that, that's, that's the first line there. And yeah, the line that is drawn is, happens when we reject our Lord, whether we reject him initially or after o, our obedience, we reject him later on. What happens is his spirit is lost to us and getting it back can only be accomplished by the ways in which God says it can be returned to us. And so it, the line is like one likened to drawing a line in the sand and seeing who will cross it, either in rebellion or support. And crossing the line suggests you have taken, uh, you've taken a stand or maybe you've taken things too far. All right, God calls us through a spirit. We know that's possible. In this case, the gospel call is the result of the work of the Holy Spirit. And we know that's true. And all have been called to obey the gospel. Yet many pay no attention to God's invitation and they just keep rejecting it. And these are those who know not God and keep not his commandments. You know, Second Thessalonians 1, seven through eight, that God is going to punish. <laughs> and you think about that, that, that covers practically everybody in this world. The majority of people at least they don't know God or they don't keep his commandments or a combination of both. All right. And many are rushing headlong with the world that is focused upon pleasure and not paying attention to the fact that there is even a soul that will stand before God in judgment. I mean, a lot of them do that. A lot of them may realize they have a soul, but they just want to ignore that and reject the, any concept that there will be a judgment to come. And most of the forces in the world today are trying to lead people away from God, especially the evil forces and just about every factor from humans 
is trying to lead people away from God. And most do not like it when told that they are wrong or in sin. So it is easier to dismiss God from the equation. And that's what people do. All right, in verse two, it says, you may barter your hope of eternity's morn for a moment of joy at the most, for the glitter of sin and the things it will win. <clears throat> so to barter is to trade. So what it's saying, you're, you're, you're trading your hope of eternity uh, just for a moment of joy. And you're trading your soul security for something that is temporary. And it lasts just a short while. And, and as the, the apostle wrote, it's just a moment. It's a momentary thing. And Paul talked about the momentary light affliction is not to be compared with the eternal weight of glory, 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 17. And Satan makes sin look appealing. We know that. But in reality, it is bitter, dangerous, deceptive, and will cause the destruction of our soul and eternal torment. But Satan really doesn't worry about that part because that's what's going to be ending up for him. That's what he is reserved for. So Satan's trying to take as many with him as he can. And Satan just wants to keep you out of heaven. In verse three, while the door of his mercy is open to you, ere the depth of his love you exhaust, won't you come and be healed won't you whisper, I yield. You know, the door of his mercy is always open as long as you have a cognizant mind and you, you're, you're thinking properly and you're able to do something about it. I mean, it's open for you, but there will come a time when that door will be closed and you'll exhaust his love. I mean, he, he's gonna love you up until you die but once that's over, if you haven't, if you're not in a right relationship with him, that door is closed. Because once you once you enter into your eternal destiny, you cannot cross over into the other. So those who are in Abraham's bosom will not be able to cross over to those who are in torment, and those in torment won't be able to cross over to those on the other side in Abraham's bosom. We learned that in uh, Luke chapter 16. And so um, Jesus is the door and Jesus stands with open arms because that is what God desires. And Jesus will be there, but eventually sooner or later, you're gonna say, I don't want Jesus. I don't wanna go to Jesus. I don't wanna go through Jesus. And guess what? The door will be shut to you. I mean, it'll be shut when you close your own door. And so we know the invitation has been offered to you. You know, in Titus 2, it says, the grace of God hath appeared unto all men. And it gives them instruction on what they need to do. And a lot of people, we know a lot of people choose not to follow God's instructions. And yes, they will pay the consequences for that. Now, God loves you so much that he gave his son to die in your place. But also remember that time will run out for everyone, including you. And God made it possible for you to be saved, but you have to make that choice on your own. God's just not going to make people be saved just because he, he wants them to. He's going to give them the choice. And he hopes you make the right choice. And that, that's why it says he's not willing for any to perish, but all come to repentance. And so... The will of God, yes. I mean, some things it's just automatic. If it's the will of God, it's going to happen. But sometimes the will of God rests upon your decisions. And what God wants from you is your obedience and your honor and glory to his name. But that's on you. That's where you have to make that decision. So don't press your luck. Your time is going to run out. And if your time runs out and you don't have Jesus in your life, if you don't have the, the gospel message that you're following, you're gonna be lost. So don't press your luck. So you need to come to God in obedience through your faith and God can heal you and God wants to heal you. We know that, but you must yield to his will. This is where a lot of people draw the line. They don't wanna do that. 
oh, they want the salvation, they want the healing from God, but they're not willing to do what God asked them to do. I mean, you, have, you must do that if you wanna be saved. And so you must humble yourself before God and do his will and you will be saved. Now, in the chorus of our song, it says, have you counted the cost if your soul should be lost? Though you gain the whole world for your own, even now it may be that the line you have crossed, have you counted, have you counted the cost? You know, in Acts 22, 16, Ananias told Paul, and why tarriest thou arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. I mean, have you done that? If you haven't done that, you need to do that. And even after our baptism, we must be careful to not allow Satan to draw us away from salvation by offering the pleasures of sin. I mean, it can happen. But you just think this song is a very sorrowful song. It, I mean, it, it can be sung as a dirge if you, if you want to consider that way. Uh, very low message. But when you think about your soul, have you counted the cost? So we should weigh the cost of our soul and make the decision because we're going to have to, after we die, live with that decision that we have made. So consider that thought. I mean, it's a simple message, but like I say, share it with others and, and who knows, you might have someone that you're aware of that may be kind of wavering in their faith and they need to hear this message because it's so important they, they hear it. Uh, otherwise they might be lost. And if you can save a soul from darkness, save a snatch a soul out of the fire, you'll cover a multitude of sins. That's what James says. So uh, consider these thoughts and Lord willing be back again another time with another lesson. You have a good day now and do something for God. Bye-bye for now.